Welcome back students. So, we are into our concluding lecture for this module which is related to biorefinery and also the concluding lecture in fact of this entire NPTEL MOOCs course. So, in the concluding lecture what we will see, we will see an extension this particular module we have seen the production of biofuel, we have also seen the production of biochemicals and we discussed biorefinery in detail. So, now a new concept which is gaining ground is the optimization and conversion of this food biomass ok. So, the waste food over whatever to convert into valuable products or value addition goods. So, in the current one as the lecture suggests it is biorefinery feedstock food waste as a renewable raw material. So, we will do a uh, general introduction then we will see food waste as a feedstock what types of food waste do we tend to use or uh, to classify whether it is a type of protein a carbohydrate or fat all of them can be converted to some form of the other either chemicals or fuel etcetera. Then we will also see a multidimensional approach for valorization of food waste it means there may be one, not one method, but there are many other methods to produce fuel. So, let us suppose we produce biohydrogen or biothane or you can produce also through microbial intervention all this can produce energy or in the same time it can also produce chemicals that we will see in the later part of this lecture. So, now what is, let us go for the introduction the food waste the most generated bio waste around the globe it is so it may act as a potential feedstock for future biorefineries, but we have been talking about biorefineries from biomass. So, instead of biomass which is the crops which are grown instead of that whatever is the food stock the food stock which is left over that can also be used as a biomass. So, the you must be knowing this organization that is the food and agricultural organization FAO refers to the decrease in edible food mass. So, what is the definition of food waste FW the decrease in edible food mass throughout the part of the supply chain that specifically leads to edible food for human consumption. So, if you see these numbers there are staggering numbers 1.3 billion tons of food and one third of the total global food production is wasted each year just see these numbers. So, it costs the economy around 750 billion worldwide or in terms of Indian rupees it is 47 trillion Indian rupees. In Asia itself the food waste generated expected to increase from 278 to 416 million tons from 2005 to 2025. So, it means that this food waste if you are going to combust in a landfill or you want to deposit somewhere. So, it will ultimately release greenhouse gas. So, there is a concern of emission of greenhouse gases from this food waste. So, now if I want to classify food waste there are two types the same figure has been adapted from this article. So, you have the food waste which is avoidable and one which is unavoidable. So, what are the avoidable ones say which is leftover food. So, this I need not repeat how to lessen this leftover food unnecessary purchase of food. So, the problem is suppose you are purchasing many things suppose packaged foods or which is having food packaging if it is not biodegradable then it will enter this our ecosystem. So, that is why you should purchase only till the food you require or till the amount you consume. Then in the catering so many of food is wasted then there may be improper storage. So, like you know this our government of India has this Food Corporation of India FCI and they have their designated go downs or storage areas where they store the uh, especially vegetables and fruits. So, like that if you do not have those in enough quantities there will be a problem. Then unavoidable is something which is coming out because of the purchase or where we consume like eggshells. So, what to do with the eggshells after it is uh, consumed then tea bags although some of the tea bags are now biodegradable, but there are still we need to do what to do with that meat bones then fruit peels all these are some some of unavoidable. So, as I told you the food waste thus depends upon the production handling storage processing and distribution and consumption avoidable food waste are edible or non edible. It can be decreased by taking precautionary measures at each levels from its production to consumption while unavoidable food waste is extremely necessary to have proper waste management and reuse practices and policies. So, now let us see what the constituents of a food waste are. The food waste constitutes of organic fraction we all know it may consist either of carbohydrates or proteins lipids or maybe traces of inorganic components this we know. 
So as you know when it goes into our body it is digested into simple organic compounds such as glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and this food waste converted into a can also be converted into a spectrum of biocommodity chemicals and bioenergy by employing certain processes. So before conversion if you use a conversion if it not goes into the human there are lots of processes available. These processes as I already explained you earlier in the biorefinery are called as pretreatment process. So we have seen this I do not need to go down again in detail physical, chemical, physiochemical and enzymatic. Physical, chemical, physiochemical intends mainly thermal type of methods while enzymatic you know where the enzymes is taking part and trying to convert it into valuable product because they all has been used for the hydrolysis. So you do a hydrolysis of food waste and you convert them to biogas or biochemicals. So integrating these bioprocesses can provide a new dimension in the framework of food waste biorefinery. So till now we have been talking about only biorefinery, now we talk about food waste biorefinery. So what are the steps to develop food waste biorefinery? We should determine the geographic locations, the activities per country and region wise. We should address the logistics with respect to the waste collection this is very important step you should be collected in such a manner that you segregate in different waste and then the transportation of that waste from the industrial plants and storage facilities. Storage facilities can be municipal waste or industrial plants may be so from industrial plants you will get industrial waste and from storage fa sorting facilities you will get municipal waste. You quantify the amount of each type of food processing and municipal waste produced. Okay. Now then again so you have two quantification first is what is the amount types of foods or waste which are produced and then what is that in that in that segregation what is the composition so what are the major macromolecules for example starch protein and minor constituents like antioxidants. So these two you have to do what is the type whether it is fats proteins lipids and if it is the type how much of each of this macromolecules starch protein or antioxidant. Then you use your concepts and access the most suitable processing route to maximize the end products at minimum cost further minimizing greenhouse gas emission and utilization of non-renewable energy. So these are the types of food waste. So you have the carbohydrate rich waste as I have written here it may be molasses, beet, spent grains from breweries, whey, apple pomace, olive pomace or the protein rich waste maybe soybean meal, linseed meal, yeast breweries, yeast hydrolyzate, corn steep liquor all these are protein rich waste or fat or oil rich waste can be classified as slaughterhouse waste or chicken oil. So all these different waste can have potential to get either converted into platform chemicals or into fuel source. So we will see how that takes place. Now, this is a multidimensional approach that is what I was talking about for valorization of food waste to value added bio based products. Now you see this is the food waste coming in. Now these are the different steps, the yellow ones are the different steps. So what is this anaerobic fermentation? So it means fermentation without oxygen. So you require certain microorganism or enzymes. So if you do that fermentation you can get hydrogen, you can get methane, you can get biohythane. So what is this biohythane? Biohythane is something which is methane plus hydrogen you are getting obtaining. So biothane, biohythane I should say typically it is ratio is given as of CH4. So it has a ratio primarily gases are CH4 and hydrogen and hydrogen in the ratio of 1 is to 4. So this is the biohythane. Now fatty acid you must be knowing fatty acids are nothing but long chain organic acids with a long alkyl group or biofertilizers. Methane is you must be knowing is simple methane all this food waste can be directly used as animal feed. Then there is solventogenesis. Now the solventogenesis means the process where certain enzymes are added and you convert them into solvents so and some what are those solvents? These are biobutanol and bioethanol. I did not explain this because this has been explained in the previous slides. So how the bioethanol and biobutanol are very important with respect to 2G and 3G fuel. Then uh, bioelectrochemistry you get uh, the compounds, platform chemicals or biopolymers or you do a microbial electrolysis cell you get hydrogen, 
So, here actually you provide an electrode and where the electrode will be an acceptor of electrons. So, you can easily produce the electrons from outside to generate electricity or in another anode you generate hydrogen. Then yeast and fungi fermentation will give you ethanol and biodiesel. Okay. Or uh, the effluents from these processes anoxygenesis, algae conversion, microbial fuel cell can be further used. They are also the effluents of these processes are can be converted to biodiesel and ethanol. Okay. So, these are the different processes for anoxygenesis means something which is uh, some production where limited hydrogen is produced. It will produce bioplastic. Then from algae conversion I, I taught this as a 3G fuel you can produce nutraceuticals, biodiesel, biomass again biomass or animal feed like that. Okay, so, these are the various approaches I would say the anaerobic fermentation, solventrogenesis, bioelectrochemistry, microbial electrolysis cell or this yeast or fungi fermentation. So, all this if you see on the right hand side are useful platform chemicals or fuels that is our idea. So, now the anaerobic fermentation in short I will mention it AF, it is likely the most difficult method for converting food waste into methane, hydrogen and volatile fatty acids. The majority of the resulting chemicals are acetic acid, propionic acid, butyric acid, isobutyric acid and valeric acid. So, food waste is gaining great interest in comparison to other bio platform for biofuels and bioproduct because of the chemical manufacturing it can be done using biogenic waste. The initial step of the sequential process, so you start with the initial step that is pretreatment which is hydrolysis, this is followed by acetogenesis, acetogenesis, dehydrogenation and methanogenesis. So, what are these, what do they mean acetogenesis, acetogenesis means it is you do a fermentation you do a fermentation okay, and you convert into monomers of sugar, monomers of sugar. Then you degrade it through certain bacteria which is called acidic bacteria, then you degrade it and you can get alcohols or you can get aldehydes or volatile fatty acids. So, that is the way they do it. So, you have the this enzymes acting here the acidogenesis, then acetogenesis, acetogenesis means production of acetate. So, it is production of acetate, production of acetate. Dehydrogenation you know it is a removal of hydrogen atom and methanogenesis means as the name suggests those particular uh, process which requires certain bacteria or enzymes and it produces methane. So, this is the process. So, these are the different processes, these are microbes which produce methane. So, these are I mean you can different microbes which are in used in these processes to produce either acetate, methane or these compounds. Moving ahead, so this is the pathway the entire pathway. So, if you see I have made in the top portion there are three different aspects which are the proteins, carbohydrates and lipids. You have hydrolytic bacteria to form sugars or lipids converted to long chain fatty acid or protein converted to amino acid. Finally, all of them are acted upon by acidogenic bacteria to form pyruvate. So, a pyruvate means it is a conjugate base of pyruvic acid. So, if I want to draw a structure of pyruvate or if I want to draw a, so pyruvate looks like this. So, this is the structure of pyruvate, okay. structure of pyruvate. Now, then pyruvate can be converted to lactate. So, lactate is structure you must be knowing still I am just repeating here lactate, lactate is you have CH3, C, O, H, H, C double bond and for another okay, these are lactate. So, you have lactate, you have pyruvate. Okay. So, you can just refer to this lactate and pyruvate. 
Now this pyruvate can be converted into oxaloacetate, the oxaloacetate is some figure which is like this, you have oxygen here, oxygen here, oxygen here and a OH here, one H here. So, this is oxaloacetate, okay. The oxaloacetate can go and convert this oxaloacetate actually it gets converted to malate. So, malate is again that particular uh, similar structure, you have oxygen and here, you have another OH group connected then O, so you have O minus here and you have O minus here. So, this is malate, okay. Then it can be further converted to fumarate. So, what is fumarate structure? Similar like that. These are all different, uh, very similar structures, conjugate base pair. So, you need some chemistry here, understanding. OH, okay. So, this is malate and finally, the succinate. The succinate is where it is, you have O, O minus, then you have succinate, okay. So, these are the different structures where you get from pyruvate, you are obtaining oxalate, malate. Then finally, succinyl COA. What does this COA means? COA means it is something like a reducing enzyme. So, it, it talks about a coenzyme A, succinyl coenzyme A. Then it converts to methyl malonyl and methyl malonyl to propionyl coenzyme A and finally to propionate, the propionate is a propionic acid conjugate. You have a syntropic bacteria where both acetate and H2 is formed. So, you have acetate forming bacteria forming acetate and in this part the pyruvate another pathway is the converted to acetyl coenzyme to be then to butyl coenzyme. This acetyl coenzyme can convert itself to ethanol. Then you go to butyrite and then again use acetogenic which is acetate containing bacteria to produce acetate. Finally, you then go this acetate is then subjected to methanogenic bacteria, methane producing bacteria and when with the addition of carbon dioxide and hydrogen you get primarily methane. Some of the other pathways which is from pyruvate you can also form formate and from formate you can get hydrogen with the release of oxygen CO2, okay. So, these are the different products, this is the pathway for aerobic fermentation for bio based products. So, these steps are associated as I told you by the action of syntropic association of various bacteria. The processes involved are hydrolytic, acetogenic, hydrogen producing, acetate forming microbes, homoacetogen, acetoclastic, acetoclastic methanogens and hydrogenoclastic methanogens. So, what do you mean by acetoclastic and hydrogenoclastic methanogens? So, these are nothing but hydrogen reducing bacteria, hydrogenoclastic means hydrogen reducing. hydrogen reducing bacteria okay, and uh, methane production. So, this acetoclastic methanogens, this is already I have told you, the acetoclastic methanogens means it is we can say methane production in low O2 condition. So, methane production, methane production, methane production in in low O2, low oxygen, okay. And homoacetogens means homoacetogens, if I want to write down, it is nothing but acetate formation. You produce acetate from, you produce acetate from what? From 2 molecules of CO2 and 4 molecules of hydrogen. So, 2 molecules, 2 molecules of CO2 plus 4 molecules of hydrogen produces acetate. Those are particular microbes are called home acetogens. Each stage of this, this fermentation, anaerobic fermentation yields important byproducts such as hydrolysis yields fermented sugar, heterogeneous yields volatile fatty acids and hydrogen, acetogenesis yields acetic acid and hydrogen while methanogenesis yield methane. 
For the enhanced production of volatile fatty acids and hydrogen, methanogenesis can be suppressed by implementing various inoculum pretreatment strategies. Single stage or two stage here, so we see what are the pathways, we are continuing with that. Single stage or two stage anaerobic digestion is possible, all reactions here in a single reactor, it reduces the operational expenses and reactor complexity in a single stage arrangement. So, intermediate products accelerate process inhibition, but the single stage has some inhibitions that is intermediate products are forming, such reactor layers have reduced conversion efficiency. So, in single stage reactors process stability, acidification and hydrogen and methane generation are major concerns. The two stage approach which physically separates, so in a two stage approach which is an improvement from the single stage approach, it separates acidogenic and methanogenic process. So, the acid containing processes and the methane containing processes are separated and it appears to be more effective. Then come the concept of fermentation, um, we will discuss different fermentation, this is dark fermentation. Dark fermentation is a microbial reaction in which anaerobic bacteria create hydrogen from organic materials via the glycolysis pathway. Diverse bacteria can carry out this reaction in the absence of light. Fermentation based biohydrogen generation is shown to be effective since it is environmentally benign, it reduces fossil fuel consumption and regulates pollutants. So, these are different bacteria which can be used, the, I need not spell out all of them, E. coli, Enterobacter genes, Citrobacter intermediates, Enterobacter cloque, Ruminococcus albus, Clostridium bejenki and Clostridium parapotrichum. These bacteria actually help to produce through the glycolysis route conversion of this monomeric sugars to acetic acid, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So, this is process is called as dark fermentation. So, scaling up and commercializing dark fermentation technology is still difficult due to a low hydrogen yield and high production cost. The operating circumstances have a significant effect on the microbial population at the end product. The acetate and butyrate pathways have higher biohydrogen outputs than alcohol and lactate processes. So, we have to optimize the fermentation process in that manner, so as to have only acetate and butyrate pathways. So, these are some hindrance for the scale up. Optimization fermentation conditions increases biohydrogen yields, but not to theoretical levels. So, what are the way to go about or improve this yield? Using intermediate products from co-culturing or sequential photo fermentation can boost biohydrogen output. Metabolic engineering has the ability to change the barriers of dark fermentation and its application to specific microbe strains, thus could revolutionize the biorefinery process. Then comes electrofermentation. Electrofermentation is a new hybrid technology that improves product yields by combining traditional fermentation principle with electromicrobiology. So, what it does is it employs electrodes to divert the flow of a tiny number of electrons into or out of the medium. Electrofermentation uses electrons from organic materials. So, you use electrons from organic materials in the medium because electron exchange at the polarized electrode is low as compared to micro real electrosynthesis. So, during electrofermentation microorganisms interact with the electrode either via diet that is direct interspecies electron transfer or MIAD or indirect interspecies electron transfer mechanism. In the case of MIAD indirect cells create mediator shuttles such as flavins, formates, phenazines and hydrogen, but in the case of direct electrical conductive pilus or proteins such as cyclochromes are used. The, these two bacteria, Shavanella onidesis and Geobacter sophrenides gucans, are the two mostly commonly studied electroactive bacteria and are considered as a model for DIET. The synergetic approach of integrating microbial environment with electrochemistry is a promising technology that establishes this approach as futuristic, environmental friendly, and sustainable approach. So, these are the different bacteria as I told you electrofermentation, dark fermentation. So, I am not going to details of the manufacturing and how the process works because it is beyond the scope of this particular lecture. We just give a thorough idea that these are the possible trends in researches and commercialization. So, moving ahead, then you come photo fermentation. You have dark fermentation, electro fermentation, then photo fermentation. As you know, it uses light. So, light when it uses, there are some photosynthetic bacteria. So, these are also called as purple non-sulfur bacteria PNSP. The nitrogenous enzyme of photosynthetic bacteria drives the electrons from again the similar approach, it will drive the electron from the organic waste thereby making CO2 and hydrogen as the products. 
Food waste containing simple chemical molecules and tiny and short fatty acid chains such as glycerol are good substrate. So, glycerol if you are able to produce from biomass, they are good substrate for photofermentation. Okay. Photofermentation of the green technology offers enormous potential and capability for the production of biohydrogen from food waste as evidenced by waste water treatment practices in industries including dairies, distilleries, breweries and sugar refineries. So, photofermentation going again discussing more about it, the projected cost of producing 1 kg of hydrogen using photofermentation is 2.83 euros by electrolysis by technology cost between 4 to 24. So, amount of by cost wise is also very less for photofermentation as compared to the normal electrolysis based method. But the challenges that I have mentioned here, there are challenges such as presence of inhibited compounds or the lower light penetration into waste material which may not be, which may be not be useful for. So, it will be light may not be passing through the waste material. So, rate of cell washout exceeds the specific growth rate. So, that is why these are the three major challenges. The immobilization of the microbial cells thus is an effective method for overcoming overwashing. So, one way to protect the overwashing is and this must be acid. So, these are the photofermentation overall reaction, you have the acetic acid water to produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide. So, utilization of the chemicals using carbohydrate rich phase. Now, we come back to our primary concern that how to utilize this waste into food rich waste. Majority of food waste are rich in carbohydrates such as glucose, sucrose and lactose that can be used as carbon sources for fermentation processes. Certain compounds including succinic acid, fumaric acid, malic acid, 3 hydroxypropionic acid, glutamic acid, itaconic acid, aspartic acid, xylitol and arbenitol can be produced through the bioconversion of. So, if you have these products from bioconversion, lactose, arabinol, xylose, you can easily provide the former chemicals or acids which I just now mentioned. So, what are the way do it? You can either do it in a normal conventional way thermal or methods or you can do hydrolysis the use of certain microbes. So, it may be natural mutant or genetically modified microbes. So, this is the simplest of it the acetone butanol ethanol fermentation you have the aqueous phase coming in which has both acetone butanol and ethanol it goes to a because this is the reactor then you extract you separate out. So, you the organic phase. So, you have in the because when you do a fermentation of this A B E mixture. Uh, so, you will have a lot of you know you have to separate the butanol, butanol and ethanol you have to produce acetone you can easily separate out by heating acetone goes away. So, you have two different alcohols ethanol and butanol which you have to separate out. So, this is the organic phase. So, the organic phase both butanol and ethanol are in presence with water. So, this is what it says you have the aqueous phase you separate out the aqueous phase here, separate out the aqueous phase and separate out the organic phase. So, organic phase will have butanol plus ethanol. Okay. Okay, so, this is the way you call the acetone butanol ethanol fermentation. So, this is the fermentation reactor you have the fermentation so, the microbe present here after it does it goes to extractor and then separator. So, separate the aqueous phase and the organic phase. So, you can see in this particular article the particular uh, microbes you use is this clostridium acetobicylum microbe. Then uh, utilization of chemicals, what are the chemicals I can utilize waste cooking oil, animal fats and oils and extraction you know from fish processing waste. They can be used as feedstock for the production of biofuels. Plant oils are attractive raw materials for the chemical industry as they could yield fatty acids. So, fatty acid are long chain organic acids. So, they may be very useful for the production of other products. Oil and fat separated from food waste could be hydrolyzed via application of subcritical water treatment to produce free fatty acid. So, free fatty acid I have already explained in the previous module I need not explain it again. So, you hydrolyze these oils and fats to free fatty acids and from free fatty acid you can then use it for either soap or detergent manufacture or some other purpose. Worldwide research is currently focused on microbial or chemical conversion of crude glycerol into a wide range of chemicals. So, this is a typical conversion of washed oil to biodiesel. So, you have oil and fat here, you have alcohol catalyst here. So, this is the reactor. When the reaction takes place, I will say you form glycerin and alcohol. This glycerin and alcohol is sent to a separator 
so you have two phases basically one is the biodiesel phase one is the glycerin plus alcohol phase so biodiesel is separated from the top glycerin and alcohol from the bottom and biodiesel is then washed and then dried to get pure biodiesel okay and the remaining part you send to this separator where the alcohol is separated and sent to the reactant while the product is glycerin water glycerin water is again sent here what you do take out the water and send it back to the wash column and the remaining you have pure glycerin so i can get i can convert the waste oil to biodiesel and glycerin these are the two important products for the conversion of waste oil to biodiesel so how does this reaction occur the first step here is to mix the alcohol with the catalyst the catalyst here is typically a strong base such as noh or koh the alcohol catalyst so when you have the alcohol coming and the catalyst alcohol is methanol showing here methanol catalyst is noh is shown here it is reacted so now what happens this reaction takes place first methanol reacts with the strong base such as sodium and hydroxide to form this methoxy methoxide ion ch2o this ch2o ions actually reacts with the oil so the methanol and base is combined in a way separate into ion as before it separates into ion the oh ion the oh1 because here in the product size you have the oh ions will react with h plus of methanol to make water leaving the och3 to react with the fatty acid but the only concern here is water production increases the side reaction of soap formation which is unwanted because if you have water then the soap formation that is because you have long chain of fatty acid soap may form because you have sodium also once the catalyst is prepared so the catalyst preparation means you are having that oh3 minus ions sodium ions and water that is prepared the triglyceride then what will happen it will react with three moles of methanol so excess methanol has to be used to ensure complete reaction the three attached carbons with hydrogen react with oh minus ions and form glycerin so this is what the three attached carbon okay 1 2 and 3 so three attached carbon with hydrogen they will react with the oh minus ion and form glycerin this is the glycerin one of the product and remaining while the ch3 group ch3 group and this group ch3 group reacts with the free fatty acid so this ch3 group will join here join here and join here to form a mixture of this esters so this mixture of fatty acid is called biodiesel that is what the formation of biodiesel takes place okay this entire figure is courtesy and this particular link you can go through this link to know more about this transesterification process okay so this is the schematic for transesterification so you have the oil and fatty oil and fat and alcohol and catalyst the methoxide ion you do a transesterification reactor you get mixed methyl esters and crude glycerol or glycerin separate them by providing heat so when you provide heat alcohol separates out here become which is lighter than water then the water is coming out here with so basically you have this you separate out the alcohol because alcohol will be present when you start the reaction alcohol may also come with glycerol so when you heat this glycerol has a high boiling point alcohol will go up glycerin will go down so you wash it with water and then neutralize with acid to remove any other base so you get pure glycerol the mix this is a biodiesel component is sent here separator then alcohol so this alcohol can again be sent to the reactor unit huh? reactor initial unit so if i want to write out here somewhere here a this can be again sent back so you separate it separate the remaining alcohol from the mixed methyl esters then uh, you take out the remaining water provide heat vacuum you get only this mixture of mixed methyl esters so oil al alcohol what does the transesterification process does oil alcohol catalyst undergo transesterification there they are mixed methyl esters from which crude glycerol is removed the crude glycerol goes into a separator under heat and a vacuum in which alcohol is removed it then goes through a water wash and is neutralized with acid to produce neutralized glycerol that is without any presence of any other base the other remaining esters from transesterification go into different separator which remove any other remaining alcohol 
they then undergo an extraction using water and is moved into a second separator under heat and a vacuum to remove any other water. So, this actually gives biodiesel. So, this is a basically the explanation of the previous flow sheet. The protein rich food waste, now what to do with the protein rich? We are talking about carbohydrates, lipids, lipids is basically acids, long acids because these lipids can convert amino acids, amino acids can be converted into long chain acids. The protein rich food waste can be used in combination with carbohydrate rich food waste to produce generic or specific fermentation media for industrial bioconversion. One could develop sustainable bioprocessing of low environmental impact that does not require supplementary of commercial nutrient formation of inorganic or organic nature. This concept may also improve process economics for many chemicals and polymers produced by fermentation. Protein rich food waste can be hydrolyzed like carbohydrate it can also be hydrolyzed via enzymatic hydrolysis that can be carried out using either commercial enzymes or crude extract containing various enzymes from fermentation of appropriate microorganism. For example, uh, th there is one example you can go through this like, uh, what this particular article. What they have done is they taken waste eggshells. So, waste eggshells is they have grinded screen calcined they got a reduced catalyst powder. This catalyst powder uses a catalyst for transesterification reaction. Now, so we have waste chicken fat in this end, you do extraction, you take out all the proteins, esterification, then transesterification. Transesterification, esterification, you must be knowing the difference. Esterification is what? We have methanol, alcohol and acid will produce, alcohol and acid produces ester and water. Now, this what it happens? So, you are producing uh, another alco alcohol plus ester will produce another alcohol, but with a different alkyl chain length and an ester that is called transesterification to get biodiesel. So, overall what we get from this food waste and its energy analysis, unavoidable food, food waste if quantified and valorized rightly eventually leads to the economic and environmental benefit of society. The caloric values of food waste under STB condition is around close to 5.35 megajoules per kg, signifying its potentiality as feedstock to harvest bioenergy. The individual calorific values of the harnessed bio waste products from food waste directly contributes to the commercial value at the industrial scale. The utilization of energy intensive and commercially viable bio waste products from the food waste through integration of bioprocessors can lead towards environmental sustainability and significantly contribute to the development of bioeconomy. This also reduces the negative impact of food waste and environment to a certain extent by integrating bioprocessors towards maximum resource recovery with simultaneous revenue generation. So, what are the conclusions? The food waste of the feedstock has a potential to produce a gamut of bio based products and simultaneously reduce the carbon footprints. The integrated biorefinery platform thus can address the futuristic bioeconomy which still needs process optimization because we are not talking about this optimization of the products like in oil refinery. So, it still requires those efficient integration, recovery and separation of products, scaling up and simultaneously scrutinizing the ideal approach. Appropriate technical, economical, scientific strategies in multidisciplinary approach can help us to develop a sustainable food waste biorefinery by addressing the circular bioeconomy goals and bridging the gap between waste remediation and product recovery. Okay, these are the conclusions of this future, this particular lecture. I will stop here. So, these are the references you should have access to. I have already covered all these references. These are the chicken fat and eggshell, how the catalyst is prepared and then a transesterification reaction is conducted. Then this is the main, this is a review paper. You should please go through this food waste biorefinery sustainable strategy for circular bioeconomy. Then the other books which are may be useful, integrated bioreferent design, analysis and optimization and then the ABE process, acetone, butanol, ethanol process, continuous production of acetone, butanol, ethanol. So, with this I come to the conclusion of the module as well as for the course. I suppose you enjoyed this all 6 modules. In these all these 6 modules if you notice I started from basic chemical industry. I talked about the inorganic and the organic based chemicals, then I went into what we have in our conventional chemical process technology, the inorganic chemical industries 1 and 2, the second and third module while which are actually which is the old part which we have already syllabus we have covered 
like uh, products of nitrogen, phosphorus, sulphur, class process, all these we have studied. Then the major part has been devoted to the catalysis part. So, catalysis part comprising primarily uh, module 4 and module 5, I have tried to segregate in the homogeneous catalysis as well as heterogeneous catalysis because these are the pillars of our chemical industry. You cannot find any other production of chemical without the application of catalyst, be it is homogeneous or heterogeneous, you will have catalysis in it. So, I try to go deeper into the various insights, the reactor design, the process setup, how thermodynamics affect the process. I suppose, I hope you have learned these techniques and also I suppose you should go through the textbooks in detail. And uh, in the concluding module, I have gone a new concept, biorefinery, which you should know because nowadays biomass is an integral, we can say one of the platform chemicals. We have discussed some platform chemicals out of these derived chemicals from platform chemicals. We have seen like 5 HMF, then levulinic acid, then ethanol, these are all platform chemicals. Then FDCA, these are you know like we have discussed in inorganic based chemicals, similarly platform chemicals in case of biomass. So, I hope I have been able to communicate with you and also make certain uh, observation and I wish you all the best. Thank you.